What's going on everyone? Today we're going to be replacing this uh, 23 year old Lenox new humidifier and AC. Um, it's going to be a pretty simple change out. Morning Tyler. And uh, we're going to reuse the return and uh, I'll show you the AC. Alright, here's the AC. Um, once again, 23-year-old Linux. We're going to replace it with an Armstrong 13 sear. That'll be pretty straightforward. And I believe this job's going to be complete with helicopters. So, I'll see you on the other side. <clears throat> this is how I recover the Freon using probes. Just get the T, T fitting um, coming out of there. Going, I got another Appian T coming into my recovery machine. The cores are out of this one and uh, down to the tank, so pretty simple. Yep, let that run for a little bit and we'll be good. updates got the old one out got the new one in Tyler's out building metal should be a pretty simple transition uh, I was gonna reuse the line set but I think I'm gonna cut this out and use my yoga pipe um, switch the coil around so everything comes out the back <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna probably mount the humidifier here um, I'm gonna cut the I'm going to probably bring this down and then over instead of all them 45s. Um, probably same with the uh, intake. Just bring them down through and kind of clean it up a little bit. But yeah, um, making progress, making progress.
Welcome back everybody. Say hi to Lisa. Lisa. Hi. Hi. She's she's enduring she's enduring the trade secret, so came Tyler on toes. Right. So everybody wanted to hear about yoga pipe. Well, this is the job we're doing again, amongst others. So with this yoga pipe, you get these little fittings, and you have to put these little O-rings on the grooves. And for this to work properly, you got to do it properly. these o-rings and you got this little plastic uh, I guess a coupler washer whatever and you put the stainless steel piece in like that Guys, like a lot of light. Yeah, people complaining all the time. I can't see. Get a light. I can't hear you. Get a microphone. So I upgraded to the GoPro, so they can hear me now. I got maybe I don't know three people watching. Four, four people, 475 subscribers, and I think four people watch. All right, so then that's done. So I got these Rems cutters. These are straight from the the mother country of Germany. then you just basically eyeball it and you gotta make this cut and this makes a nice square cut most generally and then you take these reamers clean it out this just chafes the inside so it rolls over those o-rings And just stick it in. And so you gotta make sure that that's what these little holes here for you, so you can make sure this is already down down here seated. And then you do the same thing with the three eighths. And for everybody down in southern United States or heat pump country, you cannot use this stuff in heat pumps. Strictly straight cool. If you do do this correctly, and straight cool, do it properly, you won't, you won't have any issues. All right, Tyler. What's that? Oh. He's not licensed in refrigeration yet, so he doesn't really do much of this stuff. Hopefully this spring I can get him in a class and get his certificate, but then he's going to have to turn around and go back and get AC or AL, ACL2 or whatever the Freon, new Freon is. So we got these RUMS ACR jaws. 
Let's put it on like this. It's kind of like Pro Press. Just like downtown Julie Brown. Just like that, folks. Uh, I'm assuming so. This is all dialed in for Milwaukee Force Logic. Um, I use this for Pro Press v Vaiga. Um, so when I do like copper water lines for plumbing, I got some set of different jaws for that. All right. So the inside's done. I just wanted to show you guys what this was because my batteries have already died in my GoPro so a lot of you have been asking about the yoga pipe I'm going to be doing a lot more this summer so this is my first uh, AC install this season so there it is all right I'm back with you outside So like I said downstairs, it was going. This is just the beginning of uh, teaching you guys about this yoga pipe. Uh, I got plenty of ACs to do. I'm already in the schedule, just waiting for the weather to warm up. And, uh, many of you have been asking about that, so I will produce. I will feed you. The uh, downstairs Tyler's with a helicopter. It's helicopter Huey. Yep. So, here in Michigan tomorrow, because I was planning on coming back tomorrow and doing this AC, but tomorrow, so today's Thursday, uh, we're uh, the second, and I was going to focus on getting the furnace and the humidifier going and come back tomorrow and button up this AC. Well, we're supposed to be getting uh, another bad s snowstorm, uh, four to six inches where we're at, and up north it's going to be closer to 10, 10 inches of snow. I'm over this. I mean, I want to get, get, get busy and start working here, you know. And so we're making decent time. So yeah, we'll be done with this today. Um, I mean, as long as I got Tyler helping me, I can, I can usually jam these things out pretty quick, but I'm so used to, I was so used to working by myself. It would take me two, two and a half days by myself. So Tyler gets done with all the odds and ends that I freeze me up on doing, so. And before you guys say, why are you putting a, a, a liquid line dryer or liquid uh, slate glass in there? moisture glass it's, I don't use it just for the moisture I use it for to see um, once everything's up and running I always put these on my systems uh, just to see how things are looking um, you know obviously you don't want bubbles in your system that means there's air in it um, or not at low on refrigerant low on charge so I usually, usually put these Emerson um sight glasses in there just to see once i come back and charge everything and uh kind of helps you dial it in amongst your you know your super heat sub cooling type thing as well but kind of gives you a visual inspection visual eye see how the system's running you know if it's solid solid liquid going through there then you're good to go 
just another extra precaution. Yeah, I forgot about this, so I gotta uh, get some wire and hang this up. And you know, this this yoga pipe isn't for everybody. I already know that. Um, you know, people people talk down on it. I mean, I've been using it for four or five years. I got probably I don't know, 100 and 2550 ACs out on this thing and I have not had any issues and um it had you know the key thing is it has to be installed correctly um you cannot use it on heat pumps if you use it on heat pumps I mean they they, they state right in the instructions you cannot use on heat pumps so for all you southerners down there who have heat pumps, I, yeah, you can't use this stuff. But uh, like I said, you know, I, like I said, I, I started using this four or five years ago. Um, no issues. Uh, never had a never had a leak. Never had a blowout. Um, usually when I purge these, I. I bring them up to about 450, thereabouts, whatever the manufacturer is allowed. Oh, come on. All right. So. Yep, so I use uh, Stay Clean with uh, Stay Bright 8, and uh, yeah, that stuff works good. I've always been the type who burp brazed, and once I realized you can use this stuff, man, I've been on this stuff ever since. Just use a, a NC tank acetylene. It doesn't get nearly as hot as brazen. So I mean, I like that. Cause you don't gotta run nitrogen through anything. You always want to let these things cool. 
obviously before you put the fittings on. So easy this stuff bends very easy you won't kink it i mean if you're a one-man shop this is the way to go i mean you can run this stuff by yourself i mean all honesty i mean i'm not gonna lie i mean the, the, the tools are the what, what it's expensive uh, the tools are pretty pricey I'm heavily invested in the tools for this stuff, so. You can cut it right off with the sawzall. doing this with copper you know and copper definitely line sets have its place and purpose but this stuff works pretty good like i said it's not for everybody i mean if you're the old school type and don't want to try new things i'm not gonna twist your arm you know not gonna twist your arm but, I mean, for me personally, I've, like I said, I've been using this for four years and uh, no issues. So, yep, you just put these little O-rings on. They just fall right in line. You got your little plastic, you know, doodad, stopper, whatever you want to call it. It just goes on there and you got this little ACR pipe stainless steel thing. It's got the three holes. That goes down. Kind of locks in place.
So yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool, man. It's flexible, everything. Like a, a layer of some kind of a plastic coating. Then it's got aluminum, and then it's got another layer of coating on the outside of that. So then you take these tools. They say you just shape for the inside. Just show you what it does. So if you can see, it's square in there. Then you take this, twist it. And I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of bevels the end a little bit because it's got these little these little teeth on it that's just so it slides over the, the old rings just fine and you just basically push it on that and then you take your jaws and use that to crimp let me bring in over this side good Wait to put that in. Nope. I didn't know. Put it in now and then screw it. Make sure it's level and put it in now. And then put, you pop off. You pop off the cover, the knob, and the cover, and then that, then you get it level and do two screws. All right. I didn't know if I had to put anything in there with it. Nope. All right. All right. So. As you can see, that's showing me that this is seated in all the way. And then when I crimped it down, you know, it kind of makes a little, um, it makes the three crimps on those O-rings. So there, now I'm going to purge it with some nitro and uh, we, will shoot, we should be good to go. Okay, so for when I do my installs, when I uh, test, I usually use this uh, Refco um, meter. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but I can actually link it up to my phone and see what's going on. But I use this for my um, for when I do my pressure tests. Works pretty well. So this is rated for uh, 448 PSI on uh, the high side. So I'll take it up to about 425, 400.
least 400. And I'll let it sit here for about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like I said, this yoga pipe isn't for everybody, especially if for all that you use heat pumps, but for if you want to use straight cool, this works great. Um, comes in, uh, I get them in 200 foot rolls. Uh, and I did the math and it's actually about 30% cheaper. Um, that includes the fittings uh, than copper right now. Copper is expensive. Um, so about 30, 30, between 25 and 30% cheaper by you using yoga pipe. Um, so, you know, you say what you want, but it's all about the dollar at the end of the day. You know, if you can save some money, uh, why not? You know, especially if the stuff works good. Uh, I seen, I think one video out there that the guy, someone installed it in a, an apartment complex or something and they had blowouts everywhere as now. I haven't never experienced that and I don't know if it had, uh, um, some, you know, some, uh, issues with that particular yoga pipe. But, um, yeah, we'll let this sit for about 10 minutes and then I'll be back. Okay. It's been about 15 minutes. Um, we're at 412. I think we started about 408. That kind of rose up. Uh, a lot of times what I like to do is blink this off. <laughs> It's about 40, 40 degrees here in Michigan right now, so it's not real warm. Um, so yeah, we're good. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna release this charge and then get the vacuum set up. All right. So before you start your vacuum pump up i already checked this but i'm going to show you guys you always want to put it on your port here kick it on That way you know the oil's good. Um, like I said, I checked this before, but I wanted to show you guys what was going on. So the way I do this is I do the one hose method. A lot of, I see a lot of people doing that. So basically, I'll stick my blue vac on here. And then, so I do my, my one hose, big blue hose, half inch to three eighths. This is a full three quarter inch hose. Um, if I put that back on. I usually leave that gas ballast or the gas ballast open uh, until about 20,000 or so, then I close it. Okay, so I just close that. Um, all right, I'm gonna let this run for you know, probably 20, 30 minutes, maybe longer. Uh, we got a, a little bit more work to do inside. I'm going to probably have Tyler come out here and want, wire this up, get this thing finished up out here. And obviously we won't be firing this up today because it's 40, 47 degrees. So 
Um, this thing should be dialed in anyways. It's uh, less than 15 feet for, for lengthwise. So. All right, so we're ready to do a de decay test. Past. Finish and save. All right, we're good to go. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'll crack my lines open a little bit for free, and then I'll uh, I will uh, put the Schraders back in. All right, I have updates. We're finally done. It's about quarter after five. We got here about, oh, 8.30. Um, we did the vents, new humidifier, new uh, coil. There's our line set. Everything's sealed outside, so. A little bit cleaner than what it was before. All right, here's the air conditioner. Everything's all sealed up. And uh, yeah, this one's got the sound blanket on the compressor. Makes it, uh, makes everything really quiet. So yeah, that's it on this one, guys. Uh, you know what to do. Like and subscribe if you've uh, got anything out of this content. I'd really appreciate it. Have a nice night.